Hey guys, how are you all? Today we're going to be reviewing the Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso full manga series. So as you guys probably know, Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso has been a super, super popular anime that has been spanning the past two seasons. And I have been reviewing um, all the episodes weekly because it is such a good show. It has such a strong plot, so much emotional like backing to the plot, and the characters are just so relatable in so many different ways. I wanted to introduce the manga to some of you guys who haven't heard about it. So the beginning of the video is going to span like a general summary and synopsis of what's going on. Towards the end, I'm going to delve a little bit into how the manga develops as well as how it finishes and I'm going to give some of my thoughts on the ending. So if you guys are interested in the first part of it, um, you guys can just watch up to the part where there will be a spoiler kind of divider mark and then after that I'm going to talk about how the manga ends and everything about that. So anyways, let's get started. Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso is about a boy named Arima Kose who is a child prodigy at piano and what his mother does is that she ends up like training him really harshly and raises him as a pianist. But Kose ends up losing his hearing um, with the piano, like he can't hear the keys that he plays because of his mother's death. And his mother's death is kind of like a really jarring experience in his life. So this kind of tragedy affects him as an artist and kind of affects him as a person. He's like a really quiet person now. He kind of sees the world in monochrome at the very beginning. And he's just not very motivated to do anything in music. He's just kind of going by like doing all the regular things in school. He has a meeting a girl named Kaori Miyazono and she is a friend of a friend. So there's like a few supporting characters and then Kosei ends up meeting Kaori through his friends. She is a violinist and she's so different from Kosei because whereas Kosei has been like beaten and drilled and disciplined to the point where he's always following the score music, Kaori is actually a very free form, free spirited kind of musician. And their music styles kind of clash at the very beginning but the show basically follows um, how they interact and how they kind of like change each other and how Kosei is affected by Kaori's presence in his life. And of course you guys might expect a little bit of romance, a little bit of comedy just because it's trying to like add to that entertaining aspect in manga. The interesting thing is that as the story develops, a lot of the stronger themes like loss, grief, regret, love, redemption, music, artistry, all this kind of like emerges through the medium of storytelling that they use in music. And it's actually quite beautiful. The plot progresses in a quite predictable way when it comes to like character development or like maturity because it's always like a lot of angst and a lot of like indecision before the performance and then once any of the characters get on stage, things become clear because they kind of end up finding themselves through music. It kind of says a lot about how the story is set up because Kosei at this time is 14 and the series is all about transitions. About transitioning from a child into a young adult, someone in middle school to high school, from an amateur artist to a professional musician. And it focuses a lot on the introspective thoughts that someone could have at that certain age. That's kind of what makes Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso such a full and well-rounded series. The manga encompasses 44 chapters exactly and you would think that looking back on everything that's happened you'd kind of want to reflect on like really large events but other than the performances and there only have been like four or five of them throughout the series you don't really get that much of like exciting action in the plot. What it is is that you are walking through the story through different perspectives of the characters. Mostly Kose and mostly through his emotions. And it's because of all the emotional turmoil he goes through that we end up getting so attached to the story and we end up feeling so many things. Now that's basically the overview of the plot. So if you guys have not watched or read Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso, definitely stop right here because this is all I'm gonna give you without spoilers. Everything after this point on, I'm gonna discuss the Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso manga ending. As of right now, there are only 20 episodes in the anime, so I'm only strictly talking about the manga ending. So so you have been warned. Okay, so there have been a lot of death flags raised as to how the story is going to end because when you go on the manga websites, a lot of the genres that are tagged don't have tragedy um, labeled under the categories. Um, it's hinted quite a bit throughout the series. Hiroko-san says it once where she says uh, Kosei is very temperamental in the sense that he needs something like tragedy or grief if it's going to push him forward to mature as a musician. Um, it's hinted when we see uh, Kosei chasing after the little kitty on the street. She gets hit by the car and he's unable to save her. He kind of also sees Kaori as a cat. He mentions how her personality is very similar to Kitty's, how um, they're just kind of unpredictable. And the romance between Kaori and Kosei is very beautifully developed. It's not like shoujo manga where you immediately like fall in love with someone and you just get thrown into a lot of drama. It develops at a very realistic pace. A lot of the times Kosei and Kaori are quite distanced in the story. The only thing that really bridges their distance is the fact that it's music. 
To the point of the story where Kosei realizes he likes Kaori, he really doesn't know a lot of things about her. And Kaori, when she tries to list everything that Kosei likes, the fact that he's like really awkward, he has a sweet tooth, he likes egg and mayonnaise sandwiches, she can only really list like shallow things that she's kind of observed firsthand. She knows him as a person because they're both musicians and because they kind of have that similar struggle in artistry, which is why they relate so well to each other. And then the mangaka throws in that third element of Tsubaki, who is the childhood friend who's always been there with Kosei. Um, you could kind of have like a little bit of a discussion as to whether Kaori would be better for Kosei or Tsubaki would be better for Kosei. And I think that's a pretty key discussion to the end of the series because it gets pretty rushed towards the end of the series. There's like a lot of things that are going on um, and Tsubaki is coming to terms with her feelings. So everything with her character is starting to really move towards the end because she does confess to Kosei. With Kaori, she's about to do the operation because she wants to stand on stage and perform music with him again. The really interesting thing is that you kind of see how each of the female characters are essential to Kosei's growth in different ways. With Kaori, Kosei sees her as a muse almost, like a very idealized musician of what he wants to be. Her entire personality is just like so awe-inspiring to him because he's completely the opposite of who she is. So she's unpredictable and he just kind of like gets caught up in everything that is Kaori Miyazono. Tsubaki is kind of like the safer girl, she's the best friend, she doesn't know music at all, she's just like that sporty tomboy, and she's just always been with Kosei. She knows him best and he knows her best, but really, to what extent can you take that like friendship when Tsubaki doesn't understand anything about Kosei's music life? So you kind of have this balance and this trade-off. If you ask me which relationship I'd like better, I would probably go for Kaori and Kosei's pairing, because generally I think that even though they don't know the shallow things about each other yet, they can kind of fundamentally understand each other on this mutual level based on the fact that they're both artists and they're both kind of struggling at this age. With Tsubaki, she is kind of the person who is always going to support Kosei unconditionally, but she might not necessarily understand the struggles he's going through as a musician. And overall, I thought that exploring the themes of like young musicians and amateur artists and how they grow together and challenge each other and compete with each other, I thought that was executed really well between Emi, Takashi, and Kosei's dynamic three-way mutual support system. At the very beginning, they're kind of like more distanced. They don't really understand each other. They're just kind of caught up in performing on their own. So it's more of like a childish way of approaching a competition. As they get towards the end of the series, they start to recognize each other's mutual skill, um, mutual emotion, and the fact that, you know, they're kind of in this together because they've grown up in the same district. They always see each other in competitions and they're gonna be walking down very similar roads in the future. So it's kind of this professionalism that starts to emerge and how all three of them just recognize that in each other even towards the end when Kosei is like panicking before his last performance on stage because it's the same day as Kaori's operation, Takashi is kind of like asking Kosei, are you okay? Is anything wrong? Um, even Emi is a bit concerned after she comes back from the stage. It's quite interesting to see all three of the musicians kind of grow and shape each other. When you see someone in that same art and they're so skilled and talented, you're just kind of like driven and inspired to keep going to kind of like catch up with them, see the things they see, and just kind of like understand it the way that an artist would understand it. I really did not think the ending was as strong as it could have been. I actually thought the ending was a little divided because we kept jumping between Kosei's performance Kaori's operation, all the emotions and the internal exploration and introspections, and it just kind of seemed a little bit disconnected towards the end. Granted, there were like some misconceptions, so I ended up reading 42 in English, 43 in Japanese, and 44 in English. So I kind of went back and forth a little bit. So that might have been what jarred me, but overall, like it wasn't a very climactic ending. Kosei's performance was definitely climactic. It was definitely like the high point of him figuring out who he was. In terms of his relationship with Kaori, it just kind of went anticlimactic just a bit. I really wish that Kaori could have been able to stand on stage with Kosei one more time, but that moment when Kosei is finishing his performance and he sees kind of like a visage of Kaori, um, that kind of like brings everything full circle because at the very first performance that he had with Kaori, he wanted to see the same sight that she saw in the midst of her performance. And he did get to see that towards the very end, so the author did kind of bring everything full circle in terms of a conclusion. We do not get to see Kaori's death exactly, and we don't really get to see Kosei approach Kaori's body or anything like that. It's kind of more like she almost disappears from the story. And she leaves him a letter with her feelings and how she got to this point of being a violinist. It turns out that she wanted to be a violinist because she wanted Kosei to play the piano for her. The story is very well crafted. The mangaka is very clever when it comes to hints. Even when Kaori is describing her first experience watching Kosei perform, she remarks that the girl next to her started crying and that girl next to her is actually Emmy 
from um, Emmy's recollection. So when Emmy was watching Jose perform, she ended up crying and bawling right after it. And the girl next to her freaked out was actually Kaori. So it's kind of like an interesting and coincidental turn of events that I actually really liked. The mangaka has a really great way of putting these little details in. It's like, oh, I remember this from that one time. Oh, I remember that from that one time. And it's these little hints that make the story very consistent and it makes you continuously relate from one character to another. The ending wasn't as like high fluent and artistic as I wanted it to be, but the nature of the ending I found was actually a little reminiscent of Kosa's personality. It wasn't like out there, it wasn't crazy, it wasn't dramatic, it wasn't emotional. It was just a quiet ending. It gave us a little bit of the closure we needed. And Lord knows, Kose really needs closure in his life because the emotions just linger with him so long if he doesn't get closure on these things. So I think Kaori's letter at the very end served a really great purpose for this. With my overall impression of the series, it's definitely gonna be those moments and the journey of the series more than the ending itself that really leaves a long lasting impression on me. And it's the emotions that I felt with it. Personally, as someone who's also very artsy, like I dance, I play piano, I draw, I paint, I do photography. Um, I do like all these artsy things. I feel like Shigatsuwa Kimino Uso really speaks to me in terms of its emotional depth in terms of its like explorations into the ideas of art and the transitions that you kind of like grow into. With Kosei, he's always exploring his emotions through his music so much because he's already attained a sort of skill that allows him to explore the music conceptually rather than technically. And that is kind of the reason why even at the very beginning at a very young age, he's very like emotionally and intimately tied to the piano to the point where he relates the piano to his mother and to other aspects of his life like that. It will prompt you a lot of questions about yourself when you try to relate to the characters and it will kind of make you reflect on a lot of things that you are also doing in your life. This is a 5 out of 5 cloud series. Definitely one of the most long lasting series that have made an impression on me of all the manga that I've ever read. So these are my thoughts on Shigatsu Kimi no Uso's manga full series. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I apologize that I missed Manga Mondays this week because I was still not feeling very well and it was a very hectic week. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys thought of Shigatsu Kimi no Uso. Definitely there's a lot of discussion going on about the endings of like how things could have been. So leave a comment below if you feel so inclined or tweet me at Curious Cloudy. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and if you guys like this video, don't forget to hit like or subscribe for more from me. New videos come on Mondays for Manga Mondays and one at the end of the week on Thursdays or Fridays of my choice. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys in my next video very soon. Bye!